Hi guys, so this is a video on how to debug a Windows service. If you've ever worked with the Windows service, you'll know that it's impossible, I mean not impossible, that most people don't know how to debug it inside Visual Studio. But uh, here today I'm going to show you how you can do that. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is you want to create a Windows service project. Okay. Sorry guys, my computer's a bit slow. Yep, Windows Service Software Framework. Let's call it Windows Service with Debugger. Service with Debugger. That's the one. Yeah, so the first thing you always want to do is so service one is the first service that we have in the Windows Service Project. So you want to add an installer for this service. You just right click over here, you add installer. That's it. it brings in the installer and the required uh, references for the installer. So now this solution is good to go. If this is the Windows Service that I wanted to. Uh, install in my windows server it would work it would build and it would deploy so now what we want to do is we want to debug this and that we do that with the help of the main method here but how do you debug like what's going to happen when you debug so each uh, here in each service we have an on start method and an on stop method we write the code for the service in the on start method so what we can do is we need to access the on start method somehow let's put in some dummy code here string abc equal to abc string debugger equal to string, sorry debugger is working uh, int a equal to 2 plus 2 int b equal to a into a and uh, let's see and just put a debugger here Okay, now we go back to the main method. So the first thing you want to do is if <clears throat> we want to check if the user is inside the inside user interactive space, which means is he inside Visual Studio because this code is going to go into the production environment as well. So what we can do is we put an if condition, we check if the environment is user interactive. So if it is then only do we start the debugging on interactive this is a method that we'll be creating and we pass in services to run yep and we put in an else condition here so if if the environment is not user interactive, the service will run as it always does. But if it is user interactive, that is if it is in Visual Studio, then this method will be invoked. Let's create the method, generate method. Yeah, service play services to run. It's come up beautifully. Visual Studio is a genius. Okay. So what do you want to do first? Okay, let's write console dot write line. Let's write the services are running in debug mode. Mm -hmm. Console dot write line. Let's leave a line in between. All right. Now, first thing, like I said, we want to access the on start method. 
So how do you do that? So there's something called method info. So bring in the required namespace. So if you're wondering what is method info, what it does is it uh, so it discovers the attributes of the method and it provides access to the method metadata. So basically what it says is you can access the on start method from within the main method. But it's not done yet. You need to let's name it on start method. We're going to look for type of service base since it's a service base service. Since it's a service, you're going to get the method. The method is named on start. And you're going to use the binding flags of. Uh, Let's say we need to use the binding flags of instance or of on public. Yep. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So now we have access, we can access method using this on start method variable. Now what's going to happen is since we can have multiple services in the service base here we have only one but ideally in a production environment you might have multiple services so what you want to do is you want to write a for each loop I'll call the service base so uh, service in services to run now we can write console the right line let's see now okay one sec guys <clears throat> okay i was just dealing with some background noise so uh what we want to write yeah where were we mm -hmm. yeah so we want to uh, give let the user know which service is starting so we can say Service, uh, service dot service name is starting. Then now remember the on start method we had. We went to invoke the on start method on the service. We need to pass in a couple more object parameters for the invoke method. We can just pass in a string new object. New string. Yep, that's it. Just empty. It's okay. It's going to work. We can say console the right line. Uh, service has started. Okay. I will leave some space in the Let's leave a couple of spaces in the console. Okay, now let's leave a read key in here so that the user can stop the, uh, the debug at any point. Now the user can stop the service at any point. Now, how do you access? Now we need to access the on stop method as well. What we can do is same thing we, we did for the on start method, method info, on stop method equal to type of, you already know the, uh, the format. 
type of service base or get method on stop binding flags instance or binding flags but not public so it again you have if you have more than one service you want to call on sub method for all of them so we use a for each loop service base service in So the right line stopping service service name and then you invoke it's in the uh, stop method you invoke the service you just passing up the parameters is null so now you invoke the on stop method on the service and then you can write console right line stop That's it. Then you can write console dot right line to the other and stop. Let's leave a thread dot sleep here so that the user can read the console. One second should be more than enough. That's it, guys. This is how you debug of Windows service. And you click start. There we have it, the debugger is working. B C is A B C debugger debugger is working. A is four and B is sixteen. So that's how you debug a Windows service guys. Oops, okay. But as long as you can debug it should be fine. Okay, we don't really need the console anymore nowadays. I think it's... Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can get rid of the read key here. The rest will work as the same. Okay. So that's it guys, thanks for watching and uh, please like, share, subscribe, comment. <laughs> this is not my first video but this is my first tutorial video and uh, I think it went pretty well. So let's see how it turns out. Thanks guys, thanks for watching.